my guest is Chris Galbitz, and he is the National Security Consultant and Vice President for UnderstandingTheThreat.com. And Chris's story is actually a very unique story. Chris takes us inside care, inside of what is described in his bio as Hamas, an insider account of what he thinks is a threat to this nation, what is an Islamic invasion. Chris, it's a rare story that you live to tell today, and you have infiltrated CARE, which is becoming more prevalent in our society today as an organization that is planning marches, having public input. From your experience, why did you want to go into CARE, and then what led you to have a book written about you? Your father wrote the book, Muslim Mafia. Tell us about your story. Sure. So the the purpose of the entire Muslim Mafia project was to show what CARE is like behind closed doors. You know, CARE bills itself as a Muslim uh, civil rights organization, when in all actuality, per evidence in the largest terrorism financing and Hamas trial in American history, the U.S. versus Holy Land Foundation, CARE was identified as a Hamas organization. So what, uh, the project of Muslim Mafia, where I posed as a Muslim uh, convert, I'm a Christian, but I posed as a Muslim convert, traveled around mosques all over the country, uh, worked with the national offices in CARE, and we showed what, what uh, the Holy Land Foundation trial showed, which is that CARE is not a Muslim civil rights organization. It is Hamas doing business as CARE. And uh, these are the same people that are working on Capitol Hill. Their offices are blocks from the U.S. Capitol to influence legislators, to influence policy. Uh, all, uh, all of this is to help advance the agenda of Hamas here in America. It's amazing to me that this is a story that nobody is really talking about because you're talking about care, which is something that most people probably hadn't heard of 10 years ago, but now it is very centric in our culture because of what people are saying is, anti or islamophobic behavior so they bring care to america they say look we can all get along we're just here to get along they put linda sarsour out there as kind of the face and the voice of care but as it's been tied to hamas i mean is it fair to say that these are nothing more than hamas agents operating in the united states it would not only be fair to say that owen this is factually per evidence in terrorism trials this is a factual statement to say that care is Hamas is factual. Uh, we've got a, uh, a document on our website, 30 uh, statements of fact showing that care is a Hamas organization. Look, this is a war of narratives, which is why that they, they use the Islamophobia campaign. The whole purpose of this war of narratives is to shut down any discussion of Islam, Sharia, or Jihad as being part of the problem. And the, the problem we're seeing across, across the globe, whether it's in the UK, Belgium, France, Germany, or here in the United States, the problem is Islam. This has been a problem that uh, has been waging or raging for 1,400 years. There's nothing new about this. And 100% of authoritative Islamic law mandates jihad until the entire planet is subjugated under Sharia. And 100% of authoritative Islamic law defines jihad as warfare against non-Muslims. Now, from their perspective, from the Islamic movement's perspective, jihad is total warfare. Political influence operations, propaganda, intelligence gathering, espionage, treason, all of this is jihad, and including shooting things and blowing things up. So there's the kinetic aspect of this, but primarily, if they can keep people from talking about Islam and Sharia as being the problem, then necessarily we can't defeat a problem we're not going to identify. And that's one of the main uh, lines of operation that CARE or Hamas works here in the United States is to control the narrative. And just to provide a little background well, as to why I think working. this is such an issue that's coming of age, you look it's at the working. proxy wars that the United the States hell? and countries in Europe have been involved in in the Middle East. Obviously These guys, they bring up great points here. The problem I'm seeing here is that they are controlling the narrative already. The mainstream media is going along with it. Everyone seems to be going along with it. That's in you know the on the left in the mainstream. Why? Why are they doing it? We have to find their connection to care. We need to find their connection to care. Obviously, destabilizing nations over there. People over there. 
Some of them aren't going to be happy about it. Okay, so now we have a situation domestically where we have an open border, people flooding here. And then you have another situation where you say, not only do we want this open border, we want to invite all these people. We want to put care in the spotlight and we want to put Linda Sarsour as the mouthpiece saying, these are peaceful people, Sharia law is good. Now I want to bring it back to Linda Sarsour. What do you think her role in this really is? Well, there's a term for this in national security. It's called the red-green axis, where you have the hard left Marxist socialist groups working hand in hand with jihadi groups. Linda Sarsour is the poster child for this red-green axis. Um, she is getting um, leftist groups to uh, basically push the narrative that Islam is peaceful, Islam has nothing to do with the problem, and yet from a national security standpoint, Islam has everything to do with the problem. Sharia is the blueprint by, by which all of these jihadi groups operate, whether it's al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, the Muslim Brotherhood, Boko Haram, al-Shabaab, fill in the blank. They all say that they're Muslims waging jihad to establish an Islamic State under Sharia. And yet it is people like Linda Sarsour working with the media and groups like CARE, which is Hamas, working with the media to say that this problem has nothing to do with Islam. And it's just factually false. This is such a big story. Again, we're visiting with Chris Galbitz. He is working with understandingthethreat.com. The book is Muslim Mafia that tells his story of infiltrating care and getting the insider details. Now, basically, to put it bluntly, what you have here is a group of people, and I'll hear your response to this, is Islamic people, Muslim people who want to come here and turn America into an Islamic nation, and they're using false narratives to come in under the gun, under the weather, and nobody even knows it's going on. Yeah, and it's even more sinister than that. Look, the, the Muslims that are already here and have been here for decades, the Muslim Brotherhood movement, per their own documents, say that they're going to wage civilization jihad to destroy our civilization from within. Now, you mentioned uh, U.S. foreign policy working overseas. Our Islamic advisors, many of whom are Muslim brothers, are the ones that advised us to support the Arab Spring or the Islamic uprising which was the purpose of which was to overthrow the dictators in the Middle East and uh, install Muslim Brotherhood governments. And the Muslim Brotherhood, as I've testified in front of the U.S. Senate, is no different than Al Qaeda or the Islamic State. They have the same goals. So the Islamic advisors actually worked with us here in the U.S. to support the overthrow of Gaddafi, of Hussein, of Bashar al-Assad, uh, of uh, Mubarak in Egypt, and if you read jihadi writings from the late 80s and 90s, that was the strategic objective of jihadi groups, was to overthrow these tyrants so that they could establish Islamic states under Sharia. We helped them achieve those goals, the United States government. What were some of the things you experienced when you infiltrated CARE that you either didn't expect or may have expected or shocked you? Um, I wasn't prepared to see just how uh, how entrenched Hamas was here in our U.S. capital. The, the fact that they had weekly meetings with legislators, the fact that per their own documents, they said that they wanted to, um, their own uh, meetings, that they wanted to work with Osama bin Laden more. Uh, the reach that they have in Homeland Security, Security, Judiciary, and Intelligence Committees on Capitol Hill. Uh, these are what we call suit-wearing jihadis. They smile, they wear suits, they show up to these meetings on Capitol Hill, they build relationships, and they are influencing policy by building these relationships. And I just wasn't prepared for just how sinister this was. Now, I know that you address this at understandingthethreat.com and in your book as well. But tell me, how do we know? How do we know who is a threat? How do we know who isn't a threat? What is understanding the threat to you? So the delineating factor for us is Sharia. It's all about Sharia. It's what the jihadi groups say that they want to impose. It's the blueprint for how they're fighting this war on every level. And so for us at Understanding the Threat, we are briefing leaders and legislators and training law enforcement to identify <coughs> Sharia adherent Muslims. The more Sharia adherent a Muslim is necessarily, the more of a threat they are. Now, I want to close it out with this because we've been having a conversation here. We've been pretty calm, but we're talking about a serious threat to this country. I want you to close out. I mean, 
what is the true nature of this threat? What are Americans really facing? What do the people need to hear and know about CARE that is becoming a household name? Well, look, we, the, we, we need a sense of urgency here in America right now. We are at war. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood, which CARE is an inherent part of the Muslim Brotherhood because Hamas is the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood, they state that they want to overthrow, overthrow every single nation and install an Islamic state. Now, whether or not the people listening right now agree that they can do this or not, I would argue that they are working unimpeded and have for decades. So we need a sense of urgency to A, acknowledge that we're at war, to B, understand this threat, and then we also need to understand ourselves as a nation. Who are we? What are we fighting for? If we don't start right now as a nation having these conversations, we are not going to win this war. Islam has been... Um, has has won wars for the last 1400 years against nations this is nothing new what i'm saying what i learned in mosques about jihad and sharia this is nothing new this is a 1400 year war but we need to get involved today and understanding the threat we can use your help um, sign up for our newsletter help us get the word out on social media whatever you can do to get involved in this war we need you right now that's Chris Galbitz. The book is Muslim Mafia. The website is understandingthethreat.com. Thank you for your time, Chris. Oh, thank you for having me on, Owen. That's Chris Galbitz. The book is Muslim Mafia. The website is understandingthethreat.com. We're selling a product, DNA Force, that is the very best nutraceutical 